Hello and welcome to Sex, Psychics and Psychedelics, Discovering Inner Liberation. My name is Banana Jane Garnett. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, a lover of freedom and a relentless explorer of the mind. Please come join me on my journey in hot pursuit of inner illumination and liberation. For more about me, you can find me at the Banana Jane on Instagram. Now let's dive in. My next guest is a medicine woman called Mary, who is the founder of Anamkara. Anamkara is a phrase that refers to the Celtic concept of the soul friend in religion and spirituality. Mary's mission at Anamkara is to midwife the rebirth of dying well. When she says dying well, what she means is a strong foundational understanding of how we carry the concept of death and dying into daily life. Her goal is to bring back death into the conversation and create an environment where death, dying and grieving are all seen as ways to deepen our human experiences. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, where where's a good place to start? Do you want to talk like a little bit about? I think it's always good to ground a bit. I always want to go straight into the, uh, but yeah. let's yeah, yeah, let's get a little bit of orientation. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you want to do a breath work or? A- no, I w- actually I was just meaning more more sort of uh, traditionally. Although if yeah. you want to guide me in some breath work, what do you? How do you like yeah. to do that? So for grounding, I'll just do like Nadi Shodana. Have you done it before? No. So, oh, I take my left hand and Guya Mudra, which is okay. Simple. Mm-hmm. I just relax mm-hmm. it to my left hand side, right palm up, pointer, middle finger down. Sometimes people are like, I can't, but you know, just as much as you can. And then I block my right nostril with my right thumb. And then I just inhale through the left. Block left. Eyes closed. Wait, eyes closed? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can even open yeah. just to watch me, but yeah. Um, then I block left with my ring finger and exhale right. And then inhale through the right. Block right, exhale left. Let's just do this for 60 seconds, one full minute. And just relaxing your right hand to your side. Mm. Just taking a deep inhale. Suspending your breath at the top. Imagine a tornado just swirling at the base of your spine. And as it swirls, it sweeps up gray air, gray energy as it sweeps up, up your spine, up to the top of your head, releasing it and exhaling, dropping your shoulders down. And just opening our hearts to this space, this sacred space. Asking that the highest good for all be channeled through our voices and our conversation, through our uniqueness, through our perspective, that benefits the whole. Simply leaving the past behind you, saving the future for later, and simply just being here now. And just wiggling your fingers and toes. And coming back into our circle, our space. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Yeah. That was really lovely. Yeah. Gosh, I, I need to meditate more COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's okay. all I've been doing. COVID. <laughs> that's, just, that's awesome. Oh. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> Traveling. I've just been like, I've been flying at my work, you know. Yeah. Um, like I'll just focus on that instead. Yes. Um the gray energy you said a gray tornado mm-hmm. of energy. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that. Yeah. So I just like to pick think in my mind's eye of like stagnant energy um as kind of a gray in between kind of color. Um that's my visual for it. And so I just picture the tornado just sweeping up the spine and just kind of <sighs> Doing a nice mm. little sweeping the porch kind of feeling. <laughs> mm. yeah. Sweeping the chakras. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> little chakra cleanse. That was really good. Yeah, it's a it, quick it, one, it feels, right? It's a quick one. I've never had a quick one before. I feel yeah. like you normally have to lie there and, you know, doing a lot of receiving. Yeah, I mean, um, those are, those spaces are great too, but I've found yeah. that as we uh, we evolve and there's so many plates that we, we um, spin, you know, different yeah. times, like we 
yeah, those quick ones, it's like, we need that quick, Mm. quick quick breath work, quick release. Um, And I'm finding that like those little meditations are so lovely and so paired nicely with my longer ones. (laughs) They complement mm. each other. Yeah. I just saw actually on your Instagram that mm-hmm. you have these guided meditations. Mm-hmm. And um I'm I'm only just discovering this 5D concept. I think, you oh, know, like yeah. many many things I I um I judged them for a long time as sort of, you know, too much hippie speak and I can't <laughs> I can't go there. I was like, well, I'll never get into crystals. I'll never get ah! into chakras. I'll never get <laughs> You know, one by one, the dominoes fall, the mm-hmm. inevitable happens. Here I am. Um, and I'm loving this this 5D concept. Um, yeah. And I'm wondering if you could actually describe what it is. What is yeah. 5D? So, f- I mean, there's different levels of evolution in our energetic system. Um, and so there's the 3D, the 4D, and the 5D. Um, and you know what? Here, let me, there's a, I have a chart and I'll, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Amazing. I, I, I like you. this chart because it's really simple and it's a great book if you want to read it too. Hold on. Okay. So this has been. So wait, there's no, yeah. so there's no 2D. It just goes three, four, five. You know, let me see. I'm not going to pretend I knew all of it. Is that something that I'm really um, being introduced to through um, just learning about it? It's just, just reading this book you go deeper and deeper into it. Um, by the way, yeah. here it is. Fifth dimensional healing. So the who's the author? Yeah. Christina Marant- Mar- Martin. Okay. Got it. Um, and, um, hold on. It has a description of the different D's and how we're moving up them. Um, which is really fascinating and it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, but in the file, oh, my name it's in this book uh in the 5d um what we're really doing is we're merging with source consciousness so if you think about it in these terms and and i can't find the chart but if you think about it in these terms uh evolution of the human body throughout time we'd kind of evolve to a certain point and then we die that you know and the human continues to evolve right and more things are discovered and there's a time scale to it um same with our energy um and i really believe that right now our energy is is we're awake for this evolution (laughs) we're not dying through this evolution we're really witnessing the merging of uh 4d which is the um awareness, which is the personal responsibility part of our, you know, who we are really beginning our spiritual journey. And then the 5d takes us to this other concept of oneness. Um, Everything's perfect. It's all oneness. It's no longer about your journey, although your journey is a huge part of the whole. Uh, the 5d is a really just another layer of the veil of you, us really merging with source. Um, communicating with source. Um, we'll notice right now synchronicities, um, are, are just like, everything's leading everybody in a very, like something's communicating to us and it's moving closer to us. And the closer that it moves to us, um, the more that we're opening to like this other part of our energy, other part of our connection. Uh, we're feeling it as I was describing to another girl the other day, you know, you'll be in a restaurant or somewhere and you'll be thinking a thought and someone that you don't even know just answers it. That's the merging. That's the, 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 the oneness that we're starting to just feel mm. in our natural everyday life. Mm, it's yeah. the collective. Yeah. And, and must, the five must have been accelerated by internet. Don't you think it's sort of, I mean, we made it and it's making us, we're in this yeah. reciprocity. Yeah, absolutely. And I definitely feel there's certain parts of our DNA that are activating at this time. Um, mm. particularly at this time, as we're going into the 5d, there are certain parts of our DNA that have been, they don't understand, um, science can't understand it, but it feels like in my awareness. And, and when I tap into the intuitive collective and in, in the ways that I do, it feels there's definitely parts of our awareness that are coming online right now. Um, mm. and people are getting that spark to, want to be of service all of a sudden, you know, they've lived this whole life and that all of a sudden something in them wakes up mm. and that's all they want to do is be of service. And, and I think that that's a part of the, the full picture of the human experience is to worry about what's happening with us first and then 
seeing it and evolving to like how big of a ripple effect we have on other people and the mm, future mm-hmm. and how far that goes. And so I definitely feel that part of ourselves is is waking up. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Um, and that takes me straight to psychedelics mm. because I feel like that's um, a massive accelerator in waking up. How do you see it? A massive accelerator, um, opener. It points the way to remembrance uh, in a very quick way. <laughs> and, and when you say, because I, I want to um, reach people who have not had these experiences. Right. Mm-hmm. So I know what you mean when you say remembrance. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if I would have known what yeah, yeah. you mean if I hadn't had my own journey. Yeah. So remembrance is like this cosmic joke sometimes when you're under um, different psychoactive medicines. Um, and it's a very interesting moment where everything kind of collectively makes more sense. You're like, oh, mm. that's the joke. Like I've been searching, I'm the, the serpent chasing my tail. What I've been seeking, I already am. And it's like you remember all the times. in in your life sometimes through a psychedelic experience where things are shown to you of like, this is who you are. Remember these times? And so for psychedelics, it's been, um, Mm. for me, it's more about um, the visions that I see that have been super activating um, that I'm taking back with me and integrating. And and once I integrate it, it's like, oh, I've always been love. And I've, I've felt so much love in this psychedelic experience, but now I'm remembering all the times in my life I was actually loved and I wasn't giving myself permission to feel it or whatever it is. Um, so it's, for me, psychedelics kind of has a way of showing you maybe the times in your life that you've forgotten who you are. (laughs) Yes, I agree. I feel like it shows you where, and to me, this is sort of what I call the shadow work in it is that, that you're shown where your, yeah, it's like where your, where your blood supply is cut off or something. You've shown your own where you're separate yeah. And it might be a way that you're thinking about yourself or it might be a relationship or it mm-hmm. might be sometimes like like in ayahuasca, it's, it's shown me my how I um, hold myself physically. Mm. And I've had multiple messages about sort of needing to actually straighten my spine and that being a kind of metaphorical thing, like I'm not living big enough. I'm not standing tall and proud enough in my own skin. And so lots of different <laughs> different messages like that. And they can be confronting because yeah. it's not fun sometimes to see where you've been sort of um, cut off, I suppose. Right. And it's interesting that you said that. I had the same experience in ayahuasca where the shaman, came, the shaman came over and moved me up and he said, that's your power. And mm. I was like, oh, and I felt like all of my strength. So I'm like, I've been holding myself like this. Like yeah. I haven't. And ever since then I sit up straight. So it's very interesting. Like <laughs> she's showing us the Ish. same thing. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. So yeah. uh, is tell me specifically what medicines do you work with mm-hmm. and, yeah. and how? The, the medicines that I work with on a personal level um, is whatever medicines call me for. So uh, I work with MDMA, psilocybin. Uh, 5-MeO-DMT, DMT, ayahuasca, cannabis, um, and sometimes ketamine, uh, uh, but very- And that's it? Yeah. That's it? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes ketamine, but uh, ketamine uh, and I have like a very like, you know, he's my distant cousin and sometimes we see each other at Thanksgiving, maybe. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I'm curious about ketamine. I feel yeah. it can go in both directions. Yes. Um so, I mean, that's a whole, I, I want to find out more about this actually as I go on, on this journey. But, but yeah, let's stick with the ones that you're yeah. more kind of, um, that have been your big teachers. And <sighs> gosh, I mean, I feel a gravitational pull towards talking about 5-MeO. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah, I had a big experience with it. I mean, I don't know if there's a small, a version of a small experience yeah. with 5-MeO <laughs> DMT. But um, yeah, it's very much on my mind. And I think yeah. it's one of the reasons I, I you know, I found you. So yeah. Um, would you would you start by um, talking about what it is and what the experience is? Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Well, to talk I about mean, it. Oh, <laughs> what it could be. Yeah, what it yeah, might what be. The, what the experience yeah. might be. So, like, to, yeah, to, yeah. To, to humanize yeah. such an experience with our words, I feel sometimes just 
it's like trying to explain the color red to a, uh, to somebody that's never seen red. You're like, but it's like yeah. this color. Well, <laughs> yeah, because you also because with with this one, you're touching on. I think with all of them, <sighs> there's this, there's the mystical, there's the 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 numinous, there's the ineffable, there's this, you know, what is that? That sort of <sighs> contact with with celestial realm and um so yeah how to yeah. talk about that yeah, I don't know, I'll do my let's best. try it. I'll we'll do try. my we'll best try. I'll do my best to humanize the five MEO experience but thank you I mean so it's much. really just I yeah. stand in awe in my experiences with five MEO every time I'm just like how beautiful like when I start coming online I'm just in deep gratitude for this this medicine that is showing me parts of myself, parts of other things, parts of uh, my awareness. And it's just like, this is, I, I always like, that's what I come down to. It's just, this is so beautiful. Wow. Um, but uh, this being that this experience, this experience. That it gives you. Yeah, yeah. For me and, and for me, uh, five MEO, my experience is that the, when I first um, started taking the medicine and then to now has changed, I used to go to this place called the void. Um, where it's just nothing, um, but it's amazing mm. nothingness. I'm, I'm very happy in the void. Um, it's just this endless darkness um, and I feel safe and I feel held and it's kind of like a vacation from my body uh, feeling. Um, and then I come back into my body and I get a little bit of visuals and I get the, you know, the feeling of the medicine and if I'm in a circle, the people around me and feeling their love. Um, and now my medicine experience is, is definitely turned into, I've reached another threshold, maybe another layer of it. And, and I'm just really going to this white light. So I'm going, I've gone now from like darkness to this piercing white light that is the same love that I feel in the darkness. Um, but it's, it's just, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm flying through infinity um, and falling through it at the same time with intention, without intention and feeling supported. I just feel constantly supported um, when I'm in my awareness. I can say that 5-MeO definitely is a non-dual medicine. So it will take you to a separation from your body. I like to tell that to people, especially people who have never tried this medicine and now we're talking about it and they go try it. And I'm talking, you know, I want to let them know, you know, there, there is parts of the experience that can be very disassociative. Um, you know, yes, yes. And, and I'm just going to sort of take that yeah. separation from the body thing a bit further. I'll just yeah. talk about my own, my own experience. So I've, I've taken it a couple of times or, it, you know, each time I took it a couple of times, <laughs> but I've taken it with, with different hosts. Um, the time that I took it recently, um, I felt like it was very much a death experience. Mm. My whole body went into kind of what I associate with rigor mortis, mm. but my my hands were up. Like it made me think of a, a dead rodent, like on its back. Like my hands were rigid. My whole being was rigid. My jaw was locked open, which felt very much like death. Yeah. There, there was some kind of rattle came out of my body. I was wow. like, holy fuck. And then it opened and my it was like my spirit was completely released and I saw something, experienced something that was beyond, I mean, it was huge. I think it's it's like the expansiveness of, of life that I haven't been able to really, I mean, I felt it, but somehow I saw it or connected with it in a, in a way that uh, kind of ripped the lid off my mind. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm just digesting it. And I think that there's something really extraordinary about being able to see those two places. And it's interesting, you talked about the two places that you've been going to, the very dark and the very light. Um, and, and I mean, it sounds like there's some history to your level of kind of acceptance and tolerance of both of these spaces, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, I think for me to see those two places on the same map, to see total contraction and total expansion. Oof at the same time I was like what the fuck it's I think amazing. you just I think you just humanized 5-MEO if we could just humanize it to contraction and expansion at the same time <laughs> yeah. yeah I think that was <laughs> and then everything else is your own personal experience dressing yes. dressing that up right like it's yes yeah 
I think that's wow. Yeah, I think we really touched on that. Like, there's something. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I think we got got some of that. And and I'm just gonna um just go over in terms of nuts and bolts what I know about five meo. And then will you um tell me where I'm going wrong or what what else oh. I need to know? Um, so. I've heard about it as the caviar of ayahuasca, that it kind of, it's the best bit distilled and unlike ayahuasca, which is a very long experience mm-hmm. um, and and can make you quite sick, The this 5-MEO experience is very short, although mm-hmm. it's extremely intense. Um, and I believe that the 5-MEO comes from the back of a, toad is that right no oh, well kind of it comes from the secretion of the sonoran De- desert toad um they have the glands here kind of like on the side of the head um mm. and that's what, uh, this yeah this kind of like on the side here and that's what they secrete um to get the medicine i don't serve um that med- i do serve five meo i don't think we talked about that but i don't serve uh, um the actual secretion from the toad i work with something called and I hate this word synthetic or jaguar, um, which is just the isolated alkaloid of it's cement. DMT. It's, it's a five based. meo DMT. Yeah, it's but it's the isolated alkaloid of what is actually giving the experience. There's a lot of other stuff that's in the toad. Um, a lot of other chemicals. Um, just where the toads bred, the environment, all those stuff mm. play, play as a uh, a role into what is in their secretion and how much. Um, but this is just the secre- the, I- the isolated alkaloid of the 5-MEO. Yeah. So would that be also DMT? Would that be what I would know as DMT? No. Uh, DM- no yeah, DMT, different. totally. DMT is made from, you know, the, the vine and it's totally different. Plant medicine, um, DMT, ayahuasca, totally um, different families um, and different experiences for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that you're a death doula Mm -hmm. and I know that you're a medicine woman. Mm -hmm. Do you help people actually transition with these medicines? I do. Wow. I can't wait to hear about this. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) uh, I mean, I have never given anybody medicine as they're taking their last breath. Uh, Mm -hmm. I have uh, facilitated medicine uh, a couple of days before somebody dies. Uh, or a couple weeks. Um, it's usually within that range of where we kind of have, um, you know, it, it's different when somebody's transitioning. They could be very aware one day and then they go into, um, you know, different parts of their body, um, de- you know, going through the dying process and they might not talk the next day, you know. So I, I, I have like this little window of time and it's kind of like one that I play with. But, um, Serving people 5-MEO DMT is what I do uh, and during their times of transition. It is one of the biggest privileges I feel like I've been able to witness in serving medicine. I love to serve medicine to everybody that's interested in, in, in receiving this kind of healing for themselves. But there's something a little different when you're serving it to somebody who's dying. There's something else. <laughs> Uh, one, Tell me the, more. The, the, the <laughs> biggest, me one of the more. biggest, the, one of the biggest wow. um, differences that I see in serving somebody, we'll say, who's healthy and and has the perceived like they have more time on this earth versus somebody who's terminally ill, um, and they have a ticking time. Um, you'll get the person over here who's here for the experience and here for the healing. They have uh, sometimes a lot more fear, a lot more anxiety, um, the surrender muscle, they're, they're just like, mm, you know, really dealing with all the fears that come up before taking medicine. I find that's usually, um, the case at some point. Sure. Um, and then some versus somebody who's transitioning, I'm ready. I'm ready. I've never served anybody who's transitioning that was, had any anxiety about taking the medicine. It is all walls down. I'm ready to take the medicine. And, and it's just like this, firm knowing. Um, and then when they come back to the other side, back to their body, um, so much of the fear I've witnessed of what it can be on the other side starts to get alleviated. That's what that is. I can release a little bit more control here in my body. If that's what that 
is over there. I can make peace with certain parts of my healing journey. You know, regrets, unfinished business are the forefront sometimes when somebody's about to die. Did I close, you know, this relationship correctly? Did I act impeccable with my word? How did I live my life? Who was I, you know? And so this plant medicine sometimes has a very good way of helping them wrap that up or maybe just see themselves in a different way. Yeah. Wow. So it's interesting to say people, (laughs) people facing death are actually showing less fear around medicine. Is that because they are actually facing their ultimate fear? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I've been told multiple times by different people I'm facilitating, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of contracts that I'm making with people when I'm saying, okay, I, I will, um, be this person to serve medicine. And, 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 and one of my things is I, I don't want to actually be the person that gives somebody the medicine as they take their last breath. Um, that's, you know, it's some, something I've, I've, I, I'm just not comfortable with that space. Um, but there's a lot that, um, that goes into the process prior to I'm consulting with their caregivers. I'm making sure that the medications that they're on currently aren't going to counter interact with the medicine that I'm giving them. Um, and there's a lot of prep and there's a lot of care, um, that goes into it. That's a little different, but at, at the end of the day, um, that surrender muscle, that willingness to just, if, if I do go during this medicine, that would be okay with me. Um, you know, they have that attitude. Um, with mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. Would you want to die on medicine? Hmm. You know, I would want to try, I would want to do the medicine as I'm transitioning, kind of how I've served people. Um, but I think I would want to be fully present um, mm-hmm. for my death. And I don't, um, I, I'm really not, go, I, I, you know, as I see it now as this healthy 38 year old thinking of like what it's going to be, you know, down the line, but I do envision myself not taking too many medications for my pain. Um, and, and really trying to go into this labor process as naturally as possible. Cause I do see it as a labor, just the opposite. Mm. Hmm. Right. It's it's fundamental transitioning. Who is who is giving birth to who in dying? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. It's the contraction, it, contraction and the expansion at the same time. It's the five. <laughs> it's the five. Yeah. The five MAO, the five D. <laughs> yeah. The beautiful, the beautiful star of the five. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you feel like you have a map of dying? No, I've been given little glimpses. Um, mm. a map, no. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't think we're supposed to. And so, like, right. the, the, le- the less that I relinquish trying to know exactly what happens when we pass, the I feel like the more information comes through naturally. Um, mm. So I've had little glimpses of um, um, a tunnel, like a like, yeah. a, a, a like a really vast tunnel, and it was like a half of a half of a second after somebody had transitioned. I was like, well, that was a beautiful gift. Thank you for showing me that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, just seeing. And then um, the feeling when I, I work with um, people who are grieving, and then I also work a lot in the intuitive space, card readings, tarot readings, mm-hmm. um, Reiki, you know, all that different energy. We're all intuitive. We're all psychic. But just really honed in on that muscle and really worked it. Um, and intuitively, during different spirits that have come through, um, I just feel like there's a layer process. I don't know what that looks like, but some spirits feel very close and then some spirits feel like very far away and vast. I don't know how, how to describe Mm. it any other way, but some feel like they're right here in front of me and some feel like they're integrated into like the trees and they're speaking through like everything else. It's like a bigger, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's just something that's more expanded. Right. It's not just how we're surrounded by people. Some yeah. are near, some are far. Yeah. It's, it's more complex than that. Yeah, it feels that way. Yeah. I mean, that's the way yeah. it feels to me. And that's my one, the one mm-hmm. perspective. But I mean, to have a map, I don't have one, but I feel there's something that happens on the other side. Um, yeah. And there's, and, and what's come through a lot um, as different spirits have come through um, is it really 
want me to know, really want other people to know that there's still work on the other side too. It's so funny. I just spoke to a psychic who said that. I'd never thought about that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and that, but and that's not coming back. It's not. That's not reincarnation work. Um, I don't know. That's like I don't know. You know, I don't know what that. Yeah. I don't know if that's the work to get back into a body. I don't know if that's the work to get to another layer. I don't. I don't know what it looks like. But I just know they come forward and just they keep reminding. And I'm getting goosebumps everywhere. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they just. Rem- they've just been really coming through lately and saying that message. Just so you know, tell people there's there's more work on the other side it's not like how you think it is <laughs> I don't know I, I wonder how that is I wonder how that thought can influence us mm-hmm. I mean isn't it just like another thing about death to get worried about <laughs> Maybe. I guess, I guess for, it's like, for me, not only do I have to die, but I still have to also work. But I it's, mean, yeah, I think like, the, yeah. the way they describe work is how we, we, you know, we describe work as maybe something like we have to do. Um, but maybe they're describing it as the way that we can understand like, Hey, there's more things to accomplish. More evolution, there's, there's more, more evolution. growth. Yeah. There's yeah. more stuff. Yeah. There's more layers. There's more things that are happening over from over here. And for me, that's very comforting because I'm like, yeah, all right. There's still an active part of the awareness that is beyond my body. And, you know, that is the root of human suffering is the idea that we are, um, only this. Mm. If I know I'm only this, then I'm going to do everything to protect myself. I'm going to create a lot of decisions and a lot of stories to make sure that I never have to go and fully embrace death because this is all I have. And, and the way of that concept of really teaching me like this is, we expand, we're bigger than this body. And so that to me, I find a lot of comfort in. Mm, it's interesting the way that you kind of anchored the idea of separation in the body and mm-hmm. the idea of having a body. Yeah. And I suppose pain is part of that. Yeah. Pain, um, is, pain is a great thing. Um, people always it, yeah. tell me about that. Pain yeah. is I, you know, pain's not something I, I go for. You know, it's not my aim to be like, okay, today I want to feel as much pain as possible. But um, I, the acronym of pain is pause and go inside now. Um, people go pain and suffering. I'm in pain now. I'm suffering. I'm pain now. Suffering. And it's, that's not the two that are married. Pain is like, okay, how can I? go inside of myself right now and really understand what this pain point is teaching me. What is the lesson in this pain? How am I bringing this pain to my awareness so I can heal something? In my- it's like an investigative flag for me. It's like the red flag of pain comes up. I'm like, oh gosh, okay, I've got stuff to do here. <laughs> so. so you slow down when you find mm-hmm. pain in yourself? Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and people who are transitioning too, um, you know, there's a lot of different meditations for people who have nausea. So if someone's transitioning, they'll, they'll just, you know, if they're super nauseous, they'll up the pain medication or up the, you know, the, the stomach medication to help them that. But when I come in, we start focusing on the mind. We start focusing on meditation. I start guiding them to their gut area. I start having them bring awareness to what stories are being told here. And you'll see their pain level go down naturally. Mm. Yeah, because I don't think that even morphine works all of the time. No, I mean, no. I, I experienced someone having a very painful death on a ton of morphine. Because that's because like, that that wasn't the problem. Yeah, it was interesting. I actually want to tell you about this woman because yeah. she was my mentor, and it's been this has been my profound death experience oh, that yeah. I've had. And so I had a, a mentor who was a very unusual woman. She was actually a psychedelics pioneer. She work with Leary and those guys. She took a ton of acid. She was a brilliant woman. She had like multiple PhDs and she's really amazing, amazing woman. Um, And she'd also, I don't know why her body was so fucked up, but it was fucked up. And she said it was from doing too much acid. It's very possible. Uh, She also had an attachment disorder. She was adopted. She never related to the family that she came into. She always felt very separate. So she was very at war with her body. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was, she was in a state of war with her body and she was, yeah, she was a total brainiac. She was someone who'd kind of completely out of the box. Um, so I felt very lucky to know her and she banged on about CBDs before I even knew what they were. 
And I was like, oh, she's just such a weirdo. Like, I can't. She's like, kiddo, you got to get into this business. You know, CBDs is the way forward. So I was like, yeah, sounds like weed. Sounds like something illegal. I'm a therapist. I can't blah, blah, blah. Anyways, <laughs> cut to I'm bringing her CBDs in the hospital. Right. She's dying alone um, in mm. a massive amount of pain with no one there. Morphine. Um, by the time I found her, it was a very sudden death, and I, I, so I wasn't prepared for it at all. I couldn't recognize her, and um, and the only sort of, you know, the good thing that happened, uh, I, I guess, in terms of our exchange, was I, I sprayed CBDs into her mouth, and I could feel her gratitude for it. Mm, cause she was like, yes. she didn't like morphine, she didn't like drugs, she like, I mean, CBDs. Right. Work for her and egg whites. You know, mm. she was a very refined sort of situation. And and so I had this experience of I, okay, here's this woman that I admire and I've had this unusual journey with, and she's alone and she's dying and she's terrified and she's in pain. And for me, it was my worst, it was the face of my worst fear. Right. All my, all my worst fears combined pain, being alone being terrified and and I'm like I just wanted to run out of the room I was just like ah oh, this is a fucking nightmare and of course I knew that wasn't the right thing to do and I stayed and I was like okay um I've had a baby before let's let's go into that because that's a pretty wild space mm -hmm. so I was like okay meet her like you would meet your your baby who's coming or you know when you're first um connecting and the baby's crying and you don't know what the fuck it's upset about because you don't know where it is because this whole thing is so new and so I I went on this ride of sort of reaching into her and you know I mean it was it's so weirdly intimate suddenly I'd never touched this woman before suddenly my hands on her head and and I'm finding this reassurance in myself even though I'm in complete resistance as well you know I'm finding this reassurance inside myself to give to her in this place that she's going that I have no idea about and it was really transformative to me I felt like it was a real gift yes um to be there and um after that she was with me for a while mm -hmm. like, we were having full-on conversations yep I could hear her voice. <laughs> she was really around. It was very bizarre. And it was fun because she'd gone, she was like, she'd left her body, you know, mm. she'd had such a struggle with her body and she was, she didn't feel that pain anymore. Mm. Thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you. And you really slipped into what a doula does. Um, the parallel between what a birth doula does and what a death doula does is almost identical. So you naturally just slipped into a death doula role. Mm. You naturally just went to like doula. I'm going to doula this, even though you were yeah. equating it to birth. Same thing. It, it's now it's the life being birthed somewhere else. Um, and you went to so. She's very lucky to have you. Very lucky to have oh, you in that space. You. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, it was it was great medicine for me and continues to be thinking about it. Yeah. And I remember as a kid, I used to be attracted to going to like to the old people's homes and like hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's that, me too. And, and I've been volunteering in hospices since I was 11. Wow. And wanting to be around the old people, same thing as you, wanting to, to be around, really fascinated, wanting to be in morgues and like just witness the body, not touch it, but just like witness. There's something very fascinating about the end of life at a very young age for me. Um, and that's actually kind of a really, I mean, if we want to talk about like the death of doulas. Um, I, uh, you know, through COVID not being able to, uh, volunteer has been very difficult for, oh, for, yeah. for us. Yeah. For people, I really enjoy that space. I get so much from just giving my time. Doesn't, it sounds weird to say, but, but just being present with people with no expectation at that. And that it's, it's definitely, I've witnessed that can, you know, close during COVID and it's been like, whew all right, well, now I got to open this somewhere else. So, you know? yeah. so it's been interesting, but yeah.